Good morning. You're listening to Marie Gifkins on the Foot Bliss program this morning. And we're going to talk about travel health and and also pre-op, so before the operation, and sinuses. So let's have a look at the travel health. So it's this time of the year we all like to take off and disappear out of this winter and get a bit of R&R &R and get a bit of sun, and if we can. And, you know, the hardest time, the hardest thing to combat now is the travelling in the plains. And it seems to be the air conditioning is what gets people sick. And so sometimes it's when you're coming home after a beautiful holiday and bang, you get an infection and then you're crook for a week and it just seems to just annihilate all that beautiful time that you'd had away. Or it's when you're getting to your destination and you've picked up the bug from about three uh, chairs forward and over to the left where someone was coughing and spluttering and it seems to have gone through the air conditioning and bang, you get triggered. So a good hint and tip for if you're traveling on a plane, or buses of course, uh, is to always have that thieves with you in your purse. So it's only like a, a small bottle and in the thieves is a combination of essential oils. So there's cinnamon, cloves, so it smells quite nice, and eucalyptus, rosemary and lemon. And so it's a wonderful combination and what you can do to protect yourself is it actually goes back to the plague. I've not, I know I've talked about this in previous programs, but for those who haven't heard about the thieves, it goes back to the plague time and there was a group of thieves going around into people's houses where they were dying of the plague and stealing their jewellery and their valuables. And the police couldn't seem to catch them and they couldn't understand why they didn't catch the plague and die. And eventually they got this group of people and uh, interrogated them and how come you didn't get the plague and die? Because the police were too scared to go into the houses because they didn't want to die. And they said, oh, we just put this mixture of essential oils all over our body before we go out stealing at night time. And that's why it's called thieves. So it'll protect you from the plague. So it's got to be pretty good stuff to do that. And um, so what you do when I'm, well, what I do when I'm in the airport and I'm waiting to board the plane is I get my cotton tips out and I get my thieves and I just put a drop on the end of the cotton tip and you're going to put it up the nostril as high as you can and then spiral down just gentle around the tissues because the tissues can be quite sensitive and so you're going up as high as you can and you kind of stop breathing at that point too and you go up around and down and then you do the other side up around and down and then you breathe slowly don't take in a big suction of air because you get a shot of it right up to the brain and uh, and then on the other end of your cotton tip you put another drop on and then that's going to go at the back of your tongue and on the top of your tongue and so you go right back as far as you can and across the top of the tongue and then the top of the roof of the mouth as well and that goes in and you can you can feel it it's fairly strong but it's you, the fumes sort of start to go up and they go up through your sinuses and goes up into your brain and within about five minutes you feel as if your head is starting to clear and you just can think better but it will protect all those glands around there and because that's your first port of contact with c people coughing is the breathing in and it goes into the throat and the tonsils and and then the glands there so yeah, it's your first defense mechanism so it's really good to do something to actually help that area before anything happens you know by the time you've already breathed it all in it's all getting a bit late and um, if you're going to countries uh, like the Asian countries it's always good to take some slippery elm with you slippery elm tablets and some golden seal and echinacea liquid so the slippery elm tablets are help to soothe the digestive tract and so if you pick up some kind of bug there, eating something that we shouldn't have had, but we did, you know, it was yummy at the time. And then your tummy's starting to Google and starting to cramp a little bit and you think, oh, this isn't good. So you're straight into the slippery arm tablets. You know, you can take two every couple of hours until you, the tummy is settled. So that's always a very good one for calming and soothing. 
and um, the golden seal in echinacea is like a in the new age era it's kind of like a natural antibiotic so if you think of it as a natural antibiotic you get into the echinacea and golden seal liquid and so if you think you're getting sick and you don't know what it is it's a really good one to start with and you start taking that and you're looking at I think it's about 15 drops in a small glass of water two three times a day and you will start getting on top of things without having to like panic and wonder where the next year the doctor is and how do I get there and what is it going to cost me and what do I have to take so it's always good to have a few things in your bag ready to go just in case and if you don't need them great awesome we didn't need to another thing when you are walking around and um, oh we're just having a little earthquake this is fun <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't got worse so I'm going to carry on talking <laughs> another good thing to actually have if you're walking around and you don't feel very good if you see a market you buy a lemon or buy a couple of lemons and if your tummy's a bit up and unsettled and you think you might have eaten something that there might have been a bug in there or quite often in the ice cubes there can be bugs and you grab a lemon and you cut it and you squeeze it into water clean water <laughs> and you drink that straight and the acidity in the lemons will kill the bugs in your tummy uh, so that's a really good handy one to always remember my daughter and her husband were away uh, Vietnam not f long ago and when we were talking and she says oh mum I didn't feel too good and we we're going past the markets and I saw the lemons and I said to my husband we've got to buy some got to buy some oh what do you mean so she goes and gets a couple of lemons and she drank it she went back and she drank it straight away and uh, whereas he was but he wouldn't take it so he was crook for a couple of days and she got over it very fast so you know the lemons are, are excellent for that sort of thing so that's a couple of good tips for travel health so I have a clinic here in Hastings and in Waipakarau. So my clinic is Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday in Hastings and Waipakarau is Monday and Friday. And if you want to ring and make an appointment or run something past me, uh, my number is 0272 So I've been working with health for about 23 years and so you get to know lots of all sorts of different things in different areas. So it's not just the feet that I work with. It's what I specialise in, but I work with a lot of other areas as well on the body. And I'm actually off shortly to a course in Thailand to do a abdominal massage and to get my certificate and become a practitioner. And that's working on small intestines, large intestines, liver, kidneys, adrenals, pancreas all those things in there so that can help with bloating um, constipation diarrhea um, things aren't working properly then maybe they're getting a bit of congestion going on so that'll be my exciting trip of the year and learning a little bit more or well, what I have to do for you guys <laughs> dreadful having to go to Thailand in this heat in the heat so the other thing I'd like to talk about is um, pre-ops. Now, you know, sometimes there's a time and a place for things and we do need to have operations at times. And, you know, we do need to take medications at time and I fully believe in that. And, you know, I never t tell anyone to stop taking their medications. You have to run that past a doctor. And uh, sometimes it's necessary to have an operation. And but what can we do to help ourselves before the operation? Can are there things that we can do to make ourselves prepared for the operation? Because it is scary and it's not a pleasant thought to think that we're going in and we feel quite vulnerable and you know we're putting our full trust in the surgeons and the nurses and you know they're really good at what they do and they work extremely hard and so we need to work hard to prepare ourselves getting ready leading leading up to the operation you know so if you're heading for an operation um, you know it could be a knee operation or a hip operation 
um, shoulder operation, anything like that, start preparing your body at least two, three weeks before the operation. So start slowing down on the coffee, half the intake. Um, and if you're only taking one a day, have it every second day. Decrease all your sugars. Um, don't have six, seven cups of tea. Narrow that down to two. Start having alternative drinks, like I've got, what have I got here? Lemon and ginger and honey. Um, there's lots of wonderful herb teas around. And um, we're having lots more water. You know, try and put coconut water into the diet. Have a couple of glasses a day because that hydrates you much better and it puts some good minerals into the body. You need to start bumping up your body with all the good stuff that you can get your hands on. Uh, decrease all your meat. Get it right down to maybe one red meat a week and then have fish and chicken and a vegetarian. Um, try different dishes. Just decrease that red meat because that's really hard to digest and it can clog up the bowels uh, a certain amount and we don't know how much you've got in the system to start with so you need to try and decrease all the clutter in the bowels so that they're moving a lot easier they're, and that is you start to absorb more nutrients we need a lot more minerals into the body to help you cope with the operation to cope with the medications that they put you on and to heal you know the body can heal once you've had the operation bang, the body just, off it goes. It wants to heal for you. It wants to re do the repair work. So you put in all the minerals that you can before the operation so it's ready to go. Have a lot of fruit. Bring in the fruit into your diet. Have lots of vegetables, lots of green vegetables, lots of potato, pumpkin, kumara. Um, and just slow down on all the processed foods. Don't have your processed foods. Make up your meals as much as you can and, you know, stay away from all the chemicals and additives and, and colorings and all those sort of things. They don't help the body heal, right? So you can do all these things and then a week before you have the operation, you just make sure you don't take any supplements. So you stop any vitamin C and um, any vitamin any vitamins and minerals that you're taking. You stop it at about a week before your operation. So you're straight into the operation. There's nothing that's going to hinder you. The doctor, the surgeon can do what he's got to do and then the body goes into healing. And then take the medications that the doctors, surgeons recommended. There's a reason why they're giving them to you. And take that course of antibiotics or course of painkillers or anti-inflammatories. And then once you're finished, then you can clear the body out again and clear the anaesthetic out. You know, it's pretty harsh on the body. The liver has to go through so much and do so much for you with all those things, but it can cope with it and then give it a bit of a clean out afterwards, you know, reduce all your coffee and your sugars and your, and your animal fats. You know, if you want to pick up your liver, reduce your animal fats so that's your bacon fat and your pork fat and your beef fat and your lamb fat, all those yummy things, you know. Because that's what's going to slow the blood down and make it thicker is the animal flat, fats. Because the liver has to process that. And if the liver is getting tired, it can't do it so easily. And then you start to have more and more trouble. So that's our pre-ops. So that gives you some good tips and hints of what you can do for yourself. And then the last topic we had was sinuses. So, it's, you know, it's surprisingly how many people suffer with sinuses. And there is lots of things that you can do to help. Um, we talked about the thieves earlier and the cotton tip. So if you've got a sinus infection, very good, or a hay fever, or you're just feeling a bit blocked up or clogged there, you know, you can do that once a day. You put the thieves on your cotton tip, up into the nostril, up as high as you can, and go around in a spiraling effect down. Don't go round and round in one place because it will feel like it's burning for about five minutes. And uh, you know if your sinuses are quite caked in like concrete, the best thing I know of is uh, onion poulticing on your feet. And we talked about the old onion poulticing last month on the um, 
on the program. So the onion poulticing on the feet will help draw and break down all the congestion in around the sinuses. And you might not feel that the first day that you put the onion poultice on your feet, but the second day you'll start to feel it moving. It's a weird feeling. And then the third day it's sort of so much more clearer. So there's wonderful things that you can do for the sinuses. Again, if it's starting to really be painful when you're getting an infection in the sinuses. I find for myself the golden seal and echinacea liquid is wonderful for that. It just brings it back down very quickly. Uh, we don't always have to take antibiotics and you know sometimes we have an infection in there from a long time ago. Sometimes when we were children we had ear aches and we've had a bit of a strep infection and the strep can just last in the tissue and just go into little cavities around the place. So if you're suspicious that you are prone to this sort of thing and tonsillitis, um, ear infections, sinuses, headaches, all in the, around that area and your glands come up easily, you know, you possibly uh, have kind of like a, a, a strep infection that's just long term and it's just sitting in the tissue somewhere. I'm not diagnosing, of course. <laughs> I'm just suggesting and uh, if that's the case you're suspicious get away from all your mucus foods you know get away from your dairy get away from your eggs as well you know go without dairy and eggs for a couple of months and just see how everything is so we're talking about your cow's milk your butter your ice cream your yogurt <laughs> All the good things in life, isn't it? It seems like it. But hey, it's no use suffering if you don't have to. And uh, even if you're snoring, you know, you get away from the dairy products and the eggs. And then see how you are. You know, two months later, you might find that your snoring is nowhere near as bad. And the body's got a chance to clear out all these mucus sort of forming foods. Eggs can... I know there's really good nutrition in the eggs. I've got good source of this, that and the other thing. It's, the trouble is that the bugs think that the eggs are really good for them as well. And so it actually keeps the bugs strong. And that's why I suggest to just stay away from the eggs for a while as well. I don't say forever. I just, just, just get things under control again. And then you can introduce these things again into the diet. And... Uh, Sometimes we can use the ear candling as well on the ears to help drain anything that's in the cavities or down in the lymph glands or around the sinus areas. And so the ear candling is very good to just pull out any excess wax there that you've got that's clogging the area. And um, so there's lots of wonderful things that you can do to help with your sinuses as well and there's the acupuncture as well and that works extremely well especially if you're getting a bit of hay fever and you're allergic to the the winds and the pollens and things and also you know the interesting is the effect of the liver on allergies as well if you have like hay fever with the pollens and the grains and the grasses it usually quite often comes from the liver the liver's not working as well as it should be if you have allergies to more like animals and fur and those sort of things it's coming tends, tends to come from the adrenal glands so by boosting up these organs whether it's the liver or the adrenals or sometimes there's a combination of both by boosting up these organs, the next year you're not going to suffer so much. Because, you know, it's always about preventing. Let's get rid of. We don't want these things anymore inhibiting our lives and making us feel a bit miserable and, and we're not on par and we're not full of energy and ready to go with life. So, you know, maybe you need to do something to help boost the liver, to build it up a little bit and strengthen it. You know, it's having to deal with a lot of stuff in life. It's not just all the fumes and the gases that we're breathing in the cars and walking down the street and you've got your carpet cleaning stuff and you've got the chemicals in the foods and and so forth and so forth. And so the liver's always 
got a big job to do. So sometimes it's really nice to just be nice to your liver. And, you know, some people will go a whole month without any alcohol. Well, that's really nice. But why don't you take some more bitter vegetables as well and bitter herbs. Anything bitter will help the liver. And, you know, let go of our emotions. Um, what emotion do you think hurts the liver? Anger. That's why they call it a shitty liver. <laughs> and uh, So anger is stored in the liver. So, you know, every time you're angry and you keep it and you hold on to it, you know, you're disrupting the flow of the liver. And is it really worth keeping all these negativities? Just let it go. Life's not worth it. Just let it go and let your body come back to a balance. And, um, you know, your adrenal glands have to do a lot of work as well, especially these days we have so much stress going on every day. I mean, I come to do a simple program on the radio station and what is there? There's an earthquake <laughs> and we're on the second floor. What point do you run out the door <laughs> and leave you guys to it? <laughs> So the adrenals have to cope with a lot of things. And any moment, there could be another earthquake. <laughs> and so it's like calming yourself down and just getting on with things. Um, and if you, you know, you're getting yourself wound up, that means a lot of adrenaline is being pumped around the body. And that's quite, it's like acidic. It's sort of quite acidy and it can, if you're, on the go and stressed all the time and worrying about this, that and the other thing and family and bills and your job and your boss is mean to you and and so forth and your girlfriend's doing weird things and you can't work it all out It's um, and your adrenals are just pumping all the time, you're going to get exhausted. You know, it's going to hit you somewhere. So it's like, oh, just have moments where you can just stop and breathe and just calm your brain and come back to focus and then carry on you know and if you find yourself winding up again and you're tightening your shoulders relax your shoulders breathe again come back to what you're doing refocus again so it's, you know it's it is a very what do we call it this planet stress planet i think <laughs> it's like it can be so stressful so yeah, if you would like to make an appointment for your feet or any other part of your body and you're struggling with anything and you would just like to even just come and run something past me, you can contact me on 027 249 50 90. And I have my clinic here in Hastings, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday and Waipakarau, Monday and Friday. Thank you for joining me.